Hello students, welcome to part two of our little mini unit here um, on romanticism. You should have already completed the first part of this lesson by reading some romantic poetry and doing a four-step analysis. So if you were here, you were ready to move on to the short story portion of the romantic period. We are going to be reading The Devil and Tom Walker by Washington Irving. I'm going to give you a little bit of background on who Washington Irving was, uh, as well as explain to you uh, the significance of the Faust legend. Uh, and then you're going to be reading the story and doing some work with it, connecting it back to the Romantic period. So here we go. All right, so Washington Irving, he was named after George Washington, and he was one of the first American writers to achieve international recognition. Uh, you learned about him a little bit in the video that you watched in the last section, um, and you know that his impact on American literature was quite profound. He was born into a wealthy family. He was supposed to become a lawyer, um, but he had a very active imagination and spent a great deal of time exploring the Hudson Valley in New York, which became the setting of many of his stories. Many of Washington Irving's stories are based in other legends. So you might be familiar with the legend of Sleepy Hollow and Rip Van Winkle. These were both based on old German tales and Irving took these old tales and made them his own. This was common during the Romantic period was making the past new again. In that same vein, we need to talk about the Faust legend because the devil and Tom Walker is based on the Faust legend. Now, I think it was about three years ago that Leesville did a production of Dr. Faustus. So if you saw that or you were involved with that, you have a leg up. Um, but for those of you who are not familiar with the Faust legend or Dr. Faustus, I'm gonna give you a brief background. So the legend of Faustus dates back to the 1500s. And the basic idea is that there's this guy, this astrologer, and he sells his soul to the devil in exchange for power and money. There are a whole lot of different versions of the Faust legend seen throughout literature. And they all include the following things. The first that they'll include is a pact with, with the devil. And this devil can be uh, personified as another evil figure. But the main character will always make some kind of pact for some kind of earthly benefit. So they might trade their soul for experience or knowledge or treasure or love. Um, or they might uh, trade something that's valuable to them for one of those things. The endings of the Faust legend often vary. The protagonist is either going to be doomed to failure based on his uh, selling of his soul, or he can be redeemed by virtues. However, in all versions of the Faust legend, you're gonna see themes of greed, regret, and redemption. So I always like to, when we, when we do this unit, I always like to think about how we see the Faust legend in modern or pop culture. And just off the top of my head, I came up with a couple of examples of the Faust legend in modern pop culture. A lot of you saw The Little Mermaid when you were a kid. Ariel essentially sells her voice in exchange for legs so that she can be a human. Uh, if you want to go back, by the way, and look at any of these clips, I'm going to post the PowerPoint so that you can go and look at the clips. Um, but we're not going to do that here. So this would be a great example of um, the Faust legend in Disney. Another one, another cartoon. When Shrek in Shrek Forever After signs a deal with Rumpelstiltskin, uh, the ogre for a day deal, he's giving up something in exchange for something. This is another example of the Faust legend in pop culture. And lastly, we see it mentioned um, 
in the film, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Some of you guys might have watched the film when you were in ninth grade, when you read The Odyssey. There's a lot of connections between this movie and The Odyssey. Uh, but this young man explains how he traded his soul to learn how to play the guitar. So swinging back to the devil and Tom Walker, back to the story, uh, when you read this, there's a couple of things that you should keep in mind in addition to the Faust legends that we just talked about. The first being that this is told in a third person omniscient point of view. So the narrator is all knowing so he is able then to relate all of the events of the story and know the character's innermost thoughts and feelings, not just one character. So we get a lot of different perspectives from the narrator who stands outside the action and comments about events in the story. There's a couple other things you should pay attention to. First of all, the character specifically of Tom Walker and also of his wife. Uh, how does the author create and develop that character? Um, there are two methods of characterization that you should be familiar with. Direct characterization is when it's directly stated. And indirect is when the character's traits are revealed through their thoughts and actions. We can also tell a little bit about the cultural attitudes of the uh, setting of the story. This story is set in New England in the 1720s. Uh, and this, if you remember back to the Crucible, was a time when Puritanism was fading, uh, the urge to acquire wealth was growing, and there was still, though, a fear of the woods and the things that might be lurking in it, whether that was the devil or Native Americans or other challenges that they might be facing. Just went over the setting. So again, this is New England in the 1700s. And lastly, we would be remiss if we did not talk about the romantic elements that you should look for in this story. So this does fit into the genre of romanticism. So make sure you've reviewed those five major characteristics of romanticism. Imagination and escapism, looking to the past for wisdom, finding a hero in the common man, individuality, and uh, nature as a source of spirituality. So pay attention to the setting here. A lot of the action takes place uh, in the woods. So obviously nature is gonna play an important role. And think about escapism, what Tom Walker might be attempting to escape, and also what his behavior reveals about the inner nature of man. I know this says on the PowerPoint here that the story begins in your textbook on page 203. So if you have a textbook at home, feel free to uh, read it there. Otherwise, go back to Google Classroom and there will be a link to the story as well as to an audio version so you can listen and follow along or read it on your own. When you're done reading the story, come back to Google Classroom for additional information. Enjoy.